my fellow Americans. It's shot here again. Ready for season four of the vlog. I cannot wait to just get this part party started again. Um, you know, from the last season to this one, you know, there's a lot of changes that have been made as far as like the structure to reliability, which is a really big word and no loose ends. Um, you know, a lot of the times doing this kind of stuff, this kind of work or this kind of creating like, you know, there's a lot of technicalities that go with it. It's not like just someone that's coming in and just like, you know, playing with their camera. That's really much like amateur hours and we're far from that with our background kind of thing. <clears throat> so right now the main like objective is to like go back to the original like storyline of, uh, you know, documenting going into a meet from uh, start to end, you know, and then from there we're just going to see where it goes. Um, there's a lot of like loose end projects that I have that I need to like wrap up in order to like really just like get this fully going, you know, because anytime I have like a half done project or things like that, you know, it's always in the back of my head and it kind of like messes up with my creative flow kind of thing. Hence why I haven't really been marketing my business at all too much lately because I find more value in uh, creating for myself right now and just creating for individual brands than individuals themselves, nothing against that. That's just like kind of where I'm at right now with my career, you know. I'm still, you know, photography is still funding a lot of this stuff. So like if you do want to like hire me for your photography needs, uh, just hit me up on a DM, uh, text me, call me, send me a fucking email or send a pigeon over to me, you know, I don't, whatever you got to do, do it. Uh, it's just uh, like that. That side of my business is still open. It's just not being advertised kind of thing, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, no, we're, uh, you know, it takes a lot of work to do what I do, you know. Like, uh, even though as, as, uh, as simple as it might sound, there's a reason why a whole bunch of other people with cameras can't do what I do, you know. There's a lot of technicality that goes into it in structure, storyboarding and all that. And that being said, it takes like a certain like uh, creative flow in order to get to that point. I could say right now I'm like hovering between that 65%, 70% of a creative flow, but making this video itself is like a step forward into, you know, just getting to where we need to be uh, as a creative to be able to like embark on this project again. Um, why, is it, why is it important to me to do this project? You know, honestly, like it's, it's an accumulation of experience kind of thing, you know, like it's, uh, it's like right now, as far as like pushing myself as a creative, you know, uh, to do a daily project, I think it's like, it's always been a unicorn for me, you know? So on the last one, I think I did like 27 straight videos, 27 days straight with videos. And that's a, honestly like, it, it, it's like a baseline of quality within creating that often or that frequently kind of thing, you know? So these are like kind of like measures that you put for yourself and like, when I say base, uh, like a foundation of like creative ability, you know, it, it, I'm talking about like, okay, you have like a foundation that you could create from to stay consistent. However, for me as a creative itself, like I always like, when I'm in that creative flow of creating every day, I know that sounds redundant, um, you know, it pushes me to like really just like set the bar higher and higher into our abilities kind of thing. So, you know, these kind of exercises are what I have to put in uh, for myself in order to become a better creator or the creator that I see myself being, which essentially, you know, and I was telling Jasmine about this, I think a few years, either Jasmine or Jada, I forget which one of the J's, no offense to either one of you. But, um, you know, a lot of this stuff is for me to like become better as a creative, to be able to like, you know, uh, create my first movie kind of thing, a sellable movie, right? Because there's a difference between like recording a piece, a piece of content for an hour and a half and recording a sellable piece of content for an hour and a half kind of thing. So, and that goes all the way from like framing, audio, storyboarding, all of that, all of those different like uh, functions are all take into place when creating like a really big project like that. And uh, these kinds of exercises help me get to where I need to be, you know, as a creative on the long, you know, on the long term uh, uh, spectrum of things kind of thing. So, um, you know, I just want to say uh, I'm very grateful for everyone that supports me. I'm very grateful for the people that understand what I'm doing. I'm like, you know, 
I couldn't, I couldn't be more happy for the people that I have around me. I can't be more grateful for being here in Wes's house here at TSS to be able to do what I do. You know, never in a million years could I have predicted 2020. And then also on top of that, you know, the bounce back from 2020 to be able to be here and do our thing. Because like really after uh, I left California, you know, first of all, put it into perspective being a creative in California that specialized in gyms in the year 2020. It was a very, 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 very tough year, very tough time, you know, for me uh, as a man, you know, so, you know, coming over here and seeing what Wes has built, you know, like I've only known TSS for their equipment. I didn't know them for the tradition of badass lifters that y'all have here. So it's like just kind of weird how like everything just worked out and kind of fell into place, you know, and I'm extremely grateful for him. I'm extremely grateful for Jose and Davion, you know, I'm extremely grateful for all of these different like things that have fallen into my lap. And it's not like, you know, um, it's not like, uh, how do I properly say this? It's like, you know, I'm, I specialize in a very niche kind of like project and that's underground sports, not powerlifting itself. Powerlifting is like what the subject matter is specifically, but more on the, more so in creating within underground sports. And it's really like, I did not, when I was coming, when I was moving over here from California, I wasn't expecting to like carry that forward. However, with my resume and my background, you know, that's this, I'm, I, I think, you know, this place right here, TSS is the best like possibility for, you know, everything that I've done up into this point. Like I was like low key, I guess like subliminally in my head, just getting prepared for TSS, which, you know, I see so much, so much potential, so much uh, ahead of it, ahead of them, you know, as a gym and as a brand. And, uh, you know, I love that I'm here right now. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. Um, I think one of the things is, is like, just like, you know, you realizing how big of a place this is on a national scale. You know, not even San Antonio or Texas or even let alone UTSA. You know, this is a brand that, you know, I consider like a Coca-Cola or, you know, like a, like an Apple, you know, kind of thing. Like it has the potential to be there. And I really want to see what I can do with my abilities to get us there as a community, you know. So um, right now I'm just like in this little rant right now. But I just want to say uh, thank you, everyone, once again, for supporting my work. Thank you so much for, um, you know, sticking in there with me. And, uh, you know, just thank you. I can't wait to start season four of this vlog. Uh, we're coming back fresh, we're coming back hot, and we're coming back full steam ahead. You know, so I love you, America, like a fat kid loves cake, and I will see you soon. Yeah, I just gave you a kiss.